Okay, for this tutorial I want you to download the Butterflies Tutorial AI file from Unit 4. Click Download. And this is an Illustrator file that we're going to import into After Effects. So um, I'm going to copy that out of my download and go to create. And I'm going to go to create a new folder. I just have this in a junk folder. And I'm going to create a motion graphics tutorial folder and copy that in there. And I already have a new composition started here. Um, I'll do a save as. And I'll call that MoGraph, meaning motion graphics. Okay, now what we're going to do is import that butterfly image that we just downloaded um, a layer at a time. So I'm going to import one piece of it and use that. And if you go to butterfliestutorial.ai and click import, <clears throat> we do not want the merged layers. We want one layer at a time because we're going to be animating these and doing stuff all separately. So I'm going to start with the background layer. And I'm just going to drop that on the composition. And I'm going to open up my transform and just bring that up until it covers the background. And I'm going to double click and import again. and. We're just going to keep importing butterflies and other pieces, so never merged layers, always uh, choose layer. I'm going to go to Ring Splatter, and I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to drop that on the layer above the background. And let's scale that up and take a look. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go way up because I wanna talk about something for a minute that's a little weird. So hey what the beep? uh this is pretty gosh darn jagged. I thought vectors were supposed to be infinitely scalable. Isn't that the idea, Professor? Um yep and for some reason it has it on low resolution when you start out so there's a couple things I have to change here I'm gonna change update constantly for comp layer um, so I'm going to click on that and it instantly improves quite a bit and I'm gonna go to quality and bring that up a little bit and while we're on these settings um, I want to create a motion blur um, maybe I don't really need it with this. Eh, I'll turn it on. So, motion blur will create a little bit of a blur between. It sim simulates shutter duration on a camera. So when stuff is moving, it will blur a little bit. Now this one's going to be moving pretty slowly, so it's probably not going to have that much of a blur. But I'm going to size it down, and I'm going to do a scale and rotation keyframe, which I meant to be at the beginning, so I'm just going to move those over and move to the end here. And I'm just going to do a little slight scale up and a slight rotation, not much, so that it's just going to slowly bloop, 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 bloop. Simple as that, easy peasy. <clears throat> now I want to take this composition and I want to nest it into another. So a nested composition is a composition within a composition. And this is going to be, I'm going to rename this my background composition. And then I'm going to create a new composition. And we're going to call that uh, 
butter splatter. So this is my new composition that I just created. It is blank. I'm going to take the background composition that I just made and drag it down here as a layer. And basically we're going to get what we just created as one layer in a new composition. Um, now I'm going to show you a little tidbit on why that matters. Hey guys, welcome to my new tutorial and I'm just going to be showing you some advantages and tips on how to use different compositions to achieve effects in After Effects. To start things off, here's my 3DS edit that I did about a year ago and if you haven't seen it, I'll put like a link on the screen or something if you do want to see it and it's probably the edit that I've used the most amount of footage in. So you can see in the final composition here, I've got four different compositions that I've pre-composed. So we've got the one called 3DS footage, which is the main editing. And if we bring this up, you can see there's a lot more footage in here. And then there's even more compositions in there as well. So say if we take a look at the bottom screen of the 3DS here, it's got quite a few things. It's got the map cutout, some text, a symbol, a little texture as a background, and it's all being tracked to the motion of me moving the original DS, as you can see there. So instead of trying to track each individual little element, trying to organize them, making sure we don't move any of them, what you can do is you can say pre-compose them, put them into one composition and then just worry about tracking that single composition and they'll all stick together. So what you can do is you can pretty much make up what you want in one composition, you know, then put it into a bigger one and it's there. So that's say organization and that's one of the key reasons why I pre-compose footage or use different compositions. Another way is pretty much simplicity. Now if we take a look at a speed intro I did a few weeks ago, we can see it's got this text with some nice shadows and a little outline, a little glow and stuff like that. So say if we go to our text editor here, you can see I've got two different compositions. One saying do not edit and the other is the text editor. Now this is the exact same composition, just duplicated. Now what happens if you duplicate a composition is if you change one, it'll do the exact same thing to the other. And the reason for that is it's still technically the exact same composition. So if we go into the text editor here and we get our text tool, we can type whatever we want. And if we go back, you can see it's updated with the shadows, the outline, and everything like that. And it automatically fixes it all and changes it for me. Now, you can do that with anything. And if I dragged a logo into there, it would come out exactly like that with a shadow off that as well. So that's pretty much simplicity. And, you know, it's just a really quick way to update things. Okay, moving along, uh, I'm going to import some more pieces of this Illustrator file. And we're going to start with splatter one. And I will put that as a new layer here. And we can move that to wherever you want it to sit. And let's do some review here on um, keyframing. Uh, first I'm going to turn on continuously vectorize and I'm going to turn on motion blur. Okay, and I'm going to roll this panel out and open up the transform tab. And again, keyframing animation is just setting setting one position or value in time and then later setting another and it will follow that positioning. So what I want is for these splatters to pop up one at a time um, and I'm going to use a mask to make them appear. So a circle mask will work fine. All I have to do is use the ellipse tool to do that and I'm going to start it kind of trying to go from the middle here it's not I thought oh we'll do it from the middle okay control does it from the middle and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it just kind of like swipe out like this so that it reveals that splatter and that's going to be animated so I'm going to start that mask really small 
and the mask appears as a keyable attribute under the um, splatter and under the splatter layer and um, I'm going to add a little bit of feather to it and this is not going to be keyed I'm just gonna have it be feathered um, it doesn't matter how much just whatever looks good I'm gonna go with about 13 pixels and the mask expansion is what I'm gonna actually um, what I'm going to actually animate. And I don't want this all to happen right at the beginning. I want it to go splat, 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 like something like that. And to do that, I'm going to have each one happen at a later point in time. So the first one is going to happen around two seconds. And this is just kind of arbitrary. If I don't like this timing later, I can, I can fix that. So and then I'll pull it forward a little bit and change the expansion to whatever it takes to reveal it and then that will appear as such and the um, position and scale I'm going to key both of those you can do it right from the beginning if you want or from that first keyframe it doesn't matter um, I'll do it from the first keyframe just in case it moves it in a weird way probably a better idea. And we're going to do just a little kind of slide away just slightly and a little bit of a a little bit of a size up to about 109, 110% or so. So it kind of does that. Uh, you know, it's not if I was really being hardcore, I'd probably animate all the droplets individually, but um, that's gonna that would take quite a bit of time. So it will appear, and then it will just kind of slowly drift outward. Okay, so let's double click and import butterflies, and we'll do the splatter two. And I'm kind of going with the direction that the splatter happens here when I place these. So the splatters kind of push, like, kind of splattering out in this direction. So that's what I'm going to, that's where I'm going to put it. And I'll do my mask again. And I'm going to start it from, not necessarily the anchor point, kind of from the visual center of the, of the splatter. So I think that works. And I want this footage to start at at about uh, I don't know, somewhere between four and five seconds. I'm gonna go with about five. So in order to do that, you can press Alt left bracket, and it will cut that footage to where your timeline is, to where your playback head is in the timeline. And then we can go into the mask tab, and we can give it a little feather, maybe even a little less feather. Mask, oh, whoops, not the mask opacity. Mask expansion, I'll key that, and key it again here and there we go so splat it's kind of the effect I'm looking for and we'll do the same sort of effect the scale and position. Go to the end of the timeline here. I keyframed it right at the beginning of the mask reveal. And so now I'm going to go to the end of the timeline and 
move it to the side, scale it up. Maybe not quite 160 percent, but I'm gonna move it up a little bit. I think that moved up a little too far. Bring that back down a tad. Still a little too far. So, again, same kind of effect, and again, I don't want them coming in at the same time. I can see a little remnant of that, of that splat right there. I'm going to have to cut that footage. So let's go back to where, let's collapse this layer and open up this layer, the first one we animated. I'm going to go back to where the animation starts, and if you hold shift while you're dragging your playback head, it will snap to the keyframes, which can be useful in some situations such as this one. So, and I'll press Alt left bracket, I gotta highlight the layer first. Alt left bracket, and so now I will trim that layer to begin right at that instant, so there's no trace left down here. So, should have done that in the first place, but that's okay. And I, that, that reveal is happening a little slower than I want it to. I'm going to grab the second keyframe in the mask expansion, and I'm going I'm to drag it closer so, so that the reveal should pop out kind of fast. Yeah, something like that. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Yep, okay, that's more like what I'm looking for. So let's do another import. And we'll import the final splatter. What did I do? Two and three? I think I did two and three. Nope, I did one and two. I get confused. So I want to import splatter three. size this one up a little bit. Not keyframing, just just sizing. And I'll have that appear around 8 seconds. Again, using the alt left bracket. And let's do our mask. I'm holding control and shift as I drag. that will make it so that it is a perfect circle and so that it drags from the center. So I can click on the center of the um, splatter and mask it out from the center. Okay, and this is going to happen faster this time. Something like that. position and scale. Okay, so we've got this this animation so far. And Kind of goes from there. I'm going to save that. I just saved that in my tutorials folder. And let's.
let's import the text layer. So the text layer, here it is. Um, I don't actually even really need to pull this in from, from Illustrator if you don't want to, um, unless you did something special in Illustrator to the text, then you might have a reason. But otherwise, you probably don't need to. Um, we can do it that way. I'm not saying it hurts anything. I'm just saying it's not necessary. Uh, we can also just use the text tool and create a text box in the middle. And this just works like you would expect pretty much to edit the font and things like that. You have to come down to the text That's where you go. There you go. Oh, it's over here in the character panel. Okay. Um, we'll get into this panel in a second here, but in the character panel, I can edit the text attributes and I'll just make that black so it's nice and easily visible. Pick a font here. Um, obviously, for the purposes of this, it doesn't matter too much. So, when you're doing yours, obviously you'll pick your favorite font or something that you spend some time on. Avenir is one of my favorite fonts. And I'm going to turn on safe areas right here. Title action safe. Switch to my move tool. Okay. So the center of the circle is now perfectly centered on the um, action safe here so I'm gonna have it a little bit to the side so that it's I'm gonna lock those other layers because I keep grabbing them that's another thing you can lock the layers right here um, so I'm gonna lock those other layers and I won't I'll stop grabbing that silly thing okay so I'm gonna try to center this on the circle not on the center of the canvas which is right here and if you get this message, just turn off caps lock. My caps lock is a little sticky. I need to figure out what is the problem with this keyboard, but at any rate, it might go off periodically. Okay, and I'll just use, um, well, hold on, let me get the timing here. bracket to crop that timeline and I'm going to turn on motion blur and I'm going to turn on whoa 3d layer wait this is 2d animation yes it is but that's a 3d layer yep but this is 2d animation yep I don't get it. Don't worry about it. Just do it. Uh, you don't have to use 3D layers if you don't want to, but they're a lot of fun and they're super cool. Yeah. So let me move the anchor point because I want it to rotate from the top. 
and I'm going to do a Z rotation. Nope. X rotation. That's what I want to do. I'm going to start at 90 and keyframe it right there. And then I'm going to go a little past zero, maybe to about 17 or so, 18, I don't know, whatever. And then go a little further forward. I think this might, ha this might be too slow. I'm going to move that keyframe a little closer. And then I'm going to take it back to zero. So, a little subtle. Maybe I'll exaggerate that just a tad more. Let it play out just a tiny bit longer. Yeah, so there we go. And I think that this middle keyframe needs to be, um, needs easy, easy ease. I'll just put an easy ease on it, so that should make it ease in and ease out. So yeah, that's better. Um, so naturally you can animate all this stuff. There's different scales, um, orientation and rotation that uh, can be really interesting to play with. So um, I'm going to make another text layer. Let's lock that layer. Use the layer lock, it helps. And I'm going to make this kind of emphasized a little more. I'm going to make it a little bigger. I just want it to uh, have some emphasis. I'd like to see students play with text. Um, a lot of students don't. A lot of students kind of just put some words on the screen and that's that. And it's rather dull to look at. Um, I think you can play with it at least just a little bit. So paragraph um, I'm looking for. There's a uh, spacing that I'm looking for. Where is it? That's it right there. I will do my alt left bracket to cut that text in. Okay, and there is another way to animate this, which I'm going to show you. I don't want you to lean on this too heavily, but I want you to know it's there and you can use it. Uh, if you go to animation, browse presets, um, that will put you in uh, bridge. It'll open up bridge and it will send you over to the presets and there's all these different folders of animation presets and you're welcome to play with any of these that you want but the ones I'm interested in right now are text and there's a bunch of different um, options here so um, plenty of stuff to play with uh, I'll show you one that I like which is under multi-line and sometimes these will give you a preview and sometimes not I, I don't yeah, it, I don't know. So f maybe you'll get more previews than I do. Um, but at any rate, um, the multi-line data stream is a fun one for me. I will just double-click that, 
and it's going to flash After Effects or jump it if you're on a Mac, and it will have already put that in there. So the preset just bloop, there it is. It's preset. So our little splatters are going to come in and then sample text. Okay, so save this. Feel free to play with the butterflies if you want. It still needs butterflies. And um, that'll give you a really good feel for your motion graphics project. Illustrator junkies rejoice. Graphic designers, this is your time to shine. So let's see what you got. Have fun with it.